Hi there, and welcome back to Tales from Around the World. I am so excited that you decided to join me again today and spend another wonderful Wednesday morning together. Before we begin, you've met a friend of mine who sometimes comes and listens to stories as well. His name is Leo the Lion, and he's feeling really extra shy today. So I'm wondering if you could get me to help him come out by calling on the count of three. Come out, Leo. Will you try that with me, please? Ready? One, two, three. Come out, Leo. He said he's still feeling shy. Can we try again on the count of three? Come out, Leo. Ready? One, two, three. Come out, Leo. He's still feeling super shy. Do you think that on the count of three, you could give Leo a really, really enormous round of applause. Clap as hard as you can on three and maybe that sound and that encouragement will get him to come out. Thank you so much. Ready? One, two, three. From around the world. And today's story is from the country of Romania. Yeah, Romania is a country in Eastern Europe, and I want to thank my friend Radu for telling me this story, which is very famous in Romania, but less well known in the United States. But before we begin, Leo and I want to tell you some facts about Romania, because we love for you to have three facts about every country from which we tell the stories. The first fact is that if you're feeling very, very strong, Romania contains the heaviest building in the world. Yes, their parliament building, heaviest building ever, ever built. So if you're feeling like super strong and tough, like, like I think Leo is right now, like, like you have these big muscles in your arms and you wanted to try to lift the heaviest building in the world, you would have to go to Romania. The second fact about Romania is that they love to win things. They have actually won three Guinness Book of World Record competitions. They have the longest sausage in the world, the biggest bowl of goulash in the world, and the biggest legal document in the world. So if you're looking to set any world records on sausage, goulash, or legal documents, then you will have to beat Romania's world record. The third fact is really, really incredible. Have you ever heard of a story called Dracula? Yeah, Dracula is a very famous story about a vampire who comes from where? Yeah. Transylvania. So not everybody knows that Transylvania is actually a real place and it became part of Romania. And Dracula's castle is actually part of Romania. So if you've ever watched that really fun movie, Hotel Transylvania, it could be called Hotel Romania because that's where it is now. And you can actually go there and visit the castle where Dracula was said to live, which would be a very exciting trip for after quarantine. Now the story I'm going to tell you today has two different titles. It's called Prince Charming of the Tear, and it's also called Evening Star. Once upon a time, there was an old emperor who was very, very, very sad because what he wanted more than anything in the world was a baby. But though he and his wife, the queen, had wanted a baby for many, many years, they had never had the fortune to have a child. One day, the emperor left to visit a neighboring kingdom. And when he left, 
the queen was alone in her room looking at a painting. And the queen looking at the painting and how beautiful it was, was sad because she felt the lack of beauty in her own life. And she began to cry and her tear landed on the painting. And all of a sudden, the painting started to shimmer and the paint started to run together and the queen started to see all kinds of different things, memories from when she was very young and a blue sky full of white clouds and a field full of sunflowers. And finally, the painting took shape and it was of a little baby boy. And as the queen was admiring the painting of the little baby boy, she heard a baby crying. And she thought, that's strange. A painting can't cry. And she turned and looked behind her, but she didn't see anything. And when she turned and looked back at the painting, there was no longer a frame. There was no longer a canvas. There was no longer paint. But on the floor, in a blanket, was a little baby boy who had been formed from her tear. And she picked him up and she named him Prince Charming of the Tear or Evening Star because she had wished so many times on the Evening Star to have a baby. Well, Prince Charming of the Tear grew up and it turned out that he was so strong that he could take an ax and he could throw it into the sky and he could split the clouds in half. And if there were a thunderstorm and lightning coming down, he could catch all the rain in his hands and throw it back up into the sky. And he could take a lightning bolt and he could toss it across the world. That's how strong he was. But though he was so strong, he was very, very kind. He never used his strength for anything bad. He wanted to play games and explore the kingdom and have fun with his friends and with his very happy mother and father. On the day of Prince Charming's 18th birthday, his father, the king, took him aside and he said to him, son, I have something very important to tell you. We are at war with the neighboring kingdom. And tonight, on the night of your 18th birthday, you carry on the war. Walk through the forest. At the end of the forest, you'll see a huge black lake stretching endlessly, endlessly into the distance. Use your strength to leap across the lake for it's what divides our kingdoms. On the other side of the lake, you will see a palace and there an emperor who is my same age and who is my mortal enemy. And the emperor's son, who is your same age and who will become your mortal enemy tonight. You must go and confront them and remind them that even though the princes are coming of age, the war between our kingdoms does not stop 
until we win. So, Prince Charming of the Tear felt very nervous to go and confront the other kingdom. But he was a good son and he wanted very much to please his father. So that night, as the sky turned to blue and then purple and then black, he took up his ax and put it over his shoulder and he began the walk to the neighboring kingdom. He went through the dark forest along twisting, twisting serpentine paths and as he walked he saw little eyes looking out of him of all the animals of the night and he heard rustling in the forest and he heard stomping in the trees and he heard wings above him but every time he turned his head he couldn't see any of the creatures or the people that were making so much noise so he stood taller and he took a breath and he reminded himself, I am Prince Charming of the Tear, and I will go through the forest, and I will go over the lake, and I will remind them that we are at war. So he came out the edge of the forest, and he saw what appeared to be a field of stars going on indefinitely in front of him. And in the field of stars was a golden castle. And he realized that what he was seeing was the stars from the night sky for which he had been named and the reflection of the castle of the neighboring kingdom with which they were at war. And floating from across the water, he heard the sounds of laughter and singing and feasting and celebration. And it sounded like they were having a really good time. So he was sad to ruin their party, but ruin it he must. And so he ran and he ran and he leapt and he landed on the opposite bank with the real castle in front of him. And he took another deep breath and he stormed inside and he shouted, I am Prince Charming of the Tear and I have come here to tell you that we are still at war. And a young man came up to him and everybody else fell silent as the two princes faced each other. And the other prince said to him, but I don't wanna be at war. Why should we be at war? Why should we continue? The war, both of our kingdoms have everything we could ever need. We have castles, we have forests and fields and animals and crops. Let's stop the war right now. And Prince Charming of the Tears said, well, I didn't really want there to be a war anyway. And today's my birthday. And the other prince laughed all at once and he said, you don't say, it's my birthday too. I'm going to be 18 at midnight tonight. But then his face fell. And Prince Charming of the Tears said to his new friend, why are you so sad? 
And the other prince said to him, well, at midnight, a terrible thing happens to our kingdom. And Prince Charming of the Tears said, well, what? Because the kingdom seemed so wonderful and so peaceable and so full of people happily eating and celebrating. And the other prince said, we have a terrible enemy called Mother Woods. Mother Woods takes every 10th child who is born in this kingdom and she keeps them for her own. And there is nothing we can do because none of us are strong enough to fight her. And so at midnight tonight, when I turn 18, Mother Woods will come. You'll hear her shrieking across the lake, demanding the sacrifice of the most recent 10th child. And there's nothing that our people can do. And Prince Charming of the Tear didn't like this at all because he was a good man and he was peaceable, but he had also been brought up to fight injustice. And he said, when Mother Woods comes, I will fight her. And not long after, he heard a screeching sound and a voice that echoed over the water. And the voice said, give me the child. And Prince Charming of the Tears said, we will not be giving you any child. And Mother Woods said, the child is mine. Give her to me. And Prince Charming of the Tears said, I will not. And he took all his strength and he reached down into the lake and he picked it up and he threw the lake halfway across the world. And all the people in the neighboring kingdom burst into applause. And they said, oh, but there's somebody that will really want to thank you. She's over there where the lake was, in the cabin. And so Prince Charming of the Tear walked across what was now a bare, empty, muddy riverbank, and he saw a cabin lit by a single candle. And through the window of the cabin, he saw a beautiful young woman and she was spinning at a spinning wheel. And he knocked on the door and she jumped. And he said, oh, I don't mean to scare you. I just wanted to let you know that Mother Woods has been defeated. And the girl said, she'll come back. Nobody can defeat her, she'll come back. I have been her prisoner, said the girl. I was the last 10th child. And Prince Charming of the Tears said, she's not taking you. You come back with me to my kingdom and we can have a happy life forever after. For you see, as in every fairy tale, he'd instantly fallen in love. And the beautiful girl said to him, well, I can teach you one trick. When Mother Woods comes back, she'll challenge you to a wrestling match and she'll offer you a glass of water to slake your thirst before the wrestling match. And she'll drink a glass of water herself. But you see, one glass is a glass of plain water. 
The other glass is a glass of strength. You need to insist that you drink both glasses and she will have no power to refuse you. And indeed, in a moment, Mother Wood came back screeching through the woods and she said, who dared to defy me? And Prince Charming said, I did. And I'll defy you again. <laughs> said Mother Woods, well, fine. Wrestle with me if you will. I'll even let you choose a glass of water to drink, you know, to slake your thirst before we wrestle. And Prince Charming remembered what the girl had told him. And he said, I want to drink both glasses of water. And Mother Wood said, <sighs> but she had to give him both glasses. And he drank one. <sighs> and he drank the other. <sighs> and he put them down. And he wrestled with her. And they wrestled and wrestled and wrestled. And boom, Mother Woods was defeated. And at the spectacle, the beautiful girl fainted. And Prince Charming of the Tear lifted her in his arms and he ran back across the forest with her. And he played her a piece of music to wake her up. And when she woke in his palace, he said, now, when I am of age, you will be my queen and we will live here happily forever. And she agreed. And they had some very, very happy days. And his new best friend, the other emperor's son, came over. And they, three of them, had a wonderful time laughing and playing and dancing. But the emperor's son began to become very sad. And he said to Prince Charming, I would be perfectly happy with our peaceful two kingdoms if I could only have one thing. And Prince Charming said, what is it? What is it? What do you need? I'll try to make it happen for you. And the other prince said, well, I had a sweetheart as well, but she was stolen by the hunter and you'll never give her back. The hunter rides a horse with two hearts and nobody, nobody in the world can escape such a horse. And Prince Charming of the Tear said, tell me where the hunter is and I will go and get your sweetheart. And the princess said, oh no, don't go away. I'll be so sad without you. And Prince Charming of the Tear said, it will just be for a little while and then I'll come back and I'll have the other prince's sweetheart with me and the four of us will be so happy here together. Just wait. But as he left, the princess began to weep bitter, bitter tears. Prince Charming traveled for days across the desert and finally he landed at the hut where the hunter's daughter was being guarded by a seven-headed cat. And the hunter's daughter, who was of course the other prince's sweetheart, said, we will never ever escape. My father will come back and find us. The cat has run off to tell him where I am and what I am doing. And the cat will tell him with all seven of its heads. And my father will come back with the horse with two hearts and he will catch us. And Prince Charming said, no, come on, let's just go. And he grabbed the girl and they started running across the desert. But in no time at all, the hunter did catch up on his horse with two hearts because the seven headed cat had told the hunter exactly where they were. And the hunter said, you, Leave my daughter alone. She is marrying no one. And he turned the prince to a pile of ash. And he grabbed his daughter and he put her on the back of his two-hearted horse and he rode back to his shack. 
Well, time passed. Days passed, and weeks, and months, and Prince Charming, unbeknownst to his princess, and his best friend was a pile of ash, and there he lay as a pile of ash until one day a servant was out walking and she saw the pile of ash and she realized by the shimmering around it that it was a person and the thought made her so sad that she shed a tear. And when the tear dropped on the ash again, just as when he was a child, Prince Charming came back to life. And he told the servant girl the entire story and she said, well, I, I can help you. I am the guardian of all the other horses with two hearts. And I have three other things that will help us as well. I have a brush and I have a knife and I have a scarf. And we will take all these things with us and we will go and rescue your friend's sweetheart. And so they went back on another horse with two hearts. And the seven headed cat saw them again. But the girl got on the back of the other horse with their new friend and they started riding and immediately the cat with seven heads told on them and they heard the hunter in the distance coming after them and they saw him with his horse with two hearts coming faster and faster and faster and their new friend the servant girl said throw the brush and so he threw the brush and it became a forest with thousands and thousands and thousands of trees and it slowed the hunter down but then Sure thing, they heard the hunter coming behind them again, faster and faster and faster and faster. And the servant girl said, now, now, throw the knife. So the prince took the knife and he threw it as hard as he could and it landed in the ground and where it had landed in the ground, it made an entire garden of stone roses. And it stopped the hunter and his horse in their tracks and they had to navigate around what looked like a petrified garden of stone roses. But then again, they heard them faster and faster and faster. And the servant girl said, it's our last chance. You must throw the scarf. And so the prince took the scarf and he threw it. And the scarf became an enormous, deep black lake. But the hunter grew even angrier and he and his horse went galloping over the surface of the lake and they came face to face with the prince and the other prince's sweetheart and the servant girl and he said now you are mine but there was something he didn't account for and that's that the horses with two hearts would not fight with each other and so they were at an impasse and the prince's horse with two hearts stood strong, strong enough that the prince was able to reach out and lift up the air all around the hunter and throw him into the sky where he remained. And then their new friend, the servant, and the sweetheart of the other prince, and the prince, and the horse with two hearts went galloping back to the kingdom where they were so excited to see the princess and the other prince. But when they got there, the princess had gone blind from so much weeping. And they had been gone for so long that the other prince and his sweetheart didn't recognize each other. And they all went off to sleep, feeling very disturbed. And each of them, in the night, at various moments, came outside to the fountain where the poor princess had been weeping. 
And then they went back inside to sleep again, but not before shedding some of their own tears. Well, they woke up in the morning and they saw this incredible light outside the castle. And the four of them separately went down to the fountain. But now the fountain was made of all kinds of shifting lights and pictures and memories from each of the four of them, from when they were children and when they were teenagers and when they had met each other and the bluest skies they'd ever seen and the greenest grass they'd ever seen and the sunniest days they ever remembered. And so the prince and the other prince and the other prince's sweetheart led the princess to the fountain and the four of them stood there hand in hand for just a moment before they leapt in together and the light splashed all around them like water and suddenly the princess could see again and all of them recognized each other for who they were and it was as if no time had passed at all and the prince and his princess stayed at the castle and the other prince married his sweetheart and they stayed at the castle and the two kingdoms became one incredibly happy and beautiful place and they say that if you look up at the sky at night and see the evening star and you look very carefully you can still see the four of them dancing together thank you so much for coming and i'll see you next week <laughs>